Okay guys, I wasn't gonna do this today because I already have like four videos I need to edit, but I think we're gonna do some more upcycling on camera. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, I have these four really basic t-shirts that have been hanging in my upcycling closet for a while now and I've been trying to figure out what to do with them because they're just very plain. I could bleach dye them and make them into tank tops um, or something. I think we're going to do a tank top, but I think we're going to color block these two together and these two together. What do you think? Let's go to the table and I'll show you how I'm going to cut these. Okay, so... I'll explain what pattern I'm going to use in a minute, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to separate the front from the back and then I'm going to split them up the middle and then sew things back together to make some flat pieces of fabric. So let's do that. I may try to reuse the hems. I'm not sure. I don't know if all of them have this rounded hem, yeah they do. So I might try to reuse the hem because I don't work smarter, not harder, right? Yeah, okay. So let's grab some scissors and I'm just gonna cut up the side seams. Um, all the way up the seam of the underarm on the sleeve. And then I'm gonna cut the sleeves off because I do know I'm gonna make these into tank tops. We're headed into summer and, well, a hot spring and then summer at some point. And then I'm gonna cut the shoulder seam. Do that on both sides. I thought I would pair this peachy pink color with the blue. Thought those two colors would look nice together. And then the sort of red terracotta color with the gray, because I thought that would work. I kind of thought in the back of my mind, if I do the peach and the terracotta together, I don't know why this occurred to me this particular way, but it did. I thought it would look too much like the colors of a sunburn. <laughs> I don't need to look like I'm sunburned. Okay. So once we have a back, and a front. I'm going to take them and fold them in half down the middle. And then cut them up the fold. So then now our back is in two pieces. I'm gonna do that to all the shirts and put them in a pile by color. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to take all these pieces to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a blue half to a pink half 
a red half to a gray half. I'm gonna do that with all these pieces. I'm gonna keep backs to backs and fronts to fronts. And we'll start assembling our fabric um, that way. So let me get that started and I'll be back. Okay, now it's time to start figuring out how I'm gonna patchwork these together, for lack of a better term. So I have two backs here. And I think what I'm gonna do, this is the pattern I'll be using. And yeah, there's plenty from like the shoulder seam down, seam allowance wise. This is a pattern, pretty sure it's a German pattern. I don't remember where I downloaded it from, but if anybody recognizes it, let me know and we'll put a link. It's a basic um, t-shirt dress pattern. I think what I'm gonna do is cut off on both of these from the armholes up. So we're gonna kinda lay them out. And take our cutting wheel. We're gonna just eyeball it. There we go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take these right sides together, but opposite colors. So I like this one for the bottom because the hem is very even. So this one will be the top. And so that means we're gonna lose the hem on this one, which is fine. I'm going to not take a chance at the sewing machine of making a weird seam. And let's just cut that off over here. Like that. And then we will put this at the top of that one. Our hem here is at the bottom and we're gonna sew straight across here and that'll give us color blocked patchworked thing. And we're gonna do that for all of our pieces. So I'll be right back. Okay, once you have your fabric color blocked, then you can cut the actual pieces out. Now, I'm going to use the existing hem. I was on most of the pieces able to match it up pretty decently, and I will take this little surged little nodule and fold it back and stitch it down as part of what I do. Um, the only problem you have with these color block pieces is you've got to pick a color of thread, gray or red. So that's a thing for the top stitching. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do, but let's get the pieces cut out first. So I'm going to fold them in half on the center stitching seam. Try to line up the hem because we are going to again utilize that hem space, that hem feature, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then take one of your pieces, front or back, and lay it out. I use weights, I don't use pins. Okay. And I'm going to shape the piece, but I'm not necessarily going to cut it out um, to the exact um, width of the pattern, just because I don't mind if there's a little bit of play or extra room. Um, I don't need it to be super form-fitting. And sometimes when I'm doing this, there's an interesting shape to the pieces that I'm working from that I want to keep. So this is just like a base pattern for me and it's not something I follow religiously, so to speak. For instance, right down here, we have a little bit that sticks out. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so that is the front. Then I'm gonna do the back and then do the other one. I'll be back.
Okay guys, so now we're gonna sew the front to the back, front to the back um, at the shoulders and side seams. Then I'm going to serge around the neckline and armhole openings. And as I'm serging the edge, just to finish the edge, I'm gonna add stay tape, stay tape. It's like a stretchy interfacing and it's in cut into thin strips. And I always add it to the neckline and armhole openings on any knits that I do and the hem if I'm gonna hem it. Just because I think it gives it an extra bit of stability and keeps it from getting wavy. If you're gonna do knits, um, you can do them on your regular sewing machine. Make sure you use a zigzag or stretch stitch. But I have a serger, so I'm, I'm using that. When I'm not, you know, fighting it, it works well. All right, let's do some sewing. You there? <laughs> okay, now it's time to do some top stitching and roll the edges of the neckline. Hold on. Oops. Now it's time to do some top stitching and roll the hem, the edges of the neckline and armholes in towards the inside and stitch them shut with a stretch stitch on my regular sewing machine. So I just picked some thread colors I think all I will like but I'm still in the back of my mind wondering if I should use the rainbow thread because yes, I have rainbow thread. I don't think so. But yeah, anyway, let's get that done. Okay, they're done. Do you want to see them? Okay. This is the pink and blue one. It's so cute. Hi, hang on, let me show you the other one. This is the other one. What do you think? I, I love it. I think this was a good choice. Now I do, when I have these patterns, of which I have a few, that look very similar in the front and back and there's very little difference to the shapes of the pieces, I do put a little tag um, on the back. And um, yes, it says made by me, but I don't put it in there to like put my name on stuff. I put it in there so I know which side is the back. So anyway. I really like these and uh, I can see if I see some inexpensive t-shirts that are good quality fabric at the thrift store, um, but there isn't necessarily a whole bunch of them or it's not in a very big size. I can see accumulating a couple of colors and doing more of these. Now I will say that it's really helpful if you have material that's two to four way stretch. Now this one is technically two, but it doesn't stretch as much that way. Um, that for some, for whatever reason, although all of these t-shirts are from the same manufacturer, the red and gray colors stretch a bit more. I don't know what the deal is with that, but anyway, very cute. All right. <sighs> Upcycling and color blocking. That's what we did today. What can you do with that? What does it inspire you to make? And how can you do it with little or no money and using mostly what you have? I'd love to know. Leave something in the comments below. Leave me your thoughts, questions, concerns. If you want to support the free content here on YouTube, I have a Patreon. And the Patreons 
not only have the Patreon page, but they have ready access to me with a private Facebook chat, a private YouTube channel. I share files and right now for this year, I'm staring, sharing stencil files. I'm not making stencils anymore, but I'm sharing the files with them every month. So there's that, along with other stuff. Anyway, uh, I'll leave a couple of channels down below that I find inspiring and helpful and to this whole sewing part of our artistic journey. Uh, you can tag me if you decide to make something on Facebook. I do have a Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, so you can post over there. I'd love to see what you're making. And if you do a video, I'd love it if you sent me a link. I'll go watch it. So, all right. Most importantly, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.